Um, so motivating, um, so this is part of a, of a bigger project on verifying TLS as it is, and motivate, motivating the need to, um, to analyze the real world security of TLS is uh, not difficult. It is used uh, everywhere. It's used to encrypt uh, HTTP uh, traffic, uh, Wi-Fi, um, VPNs, file transfer, mail, voice over IP, and so on. It's uh, widely implemented and it's under constant attacks. So there are Snowden allegations that the NSA is routinely subverting uh, TLS encryption. And uh, there are also a lot of academic work on that. So by now it's fair to say that there's not only uh, a cottage industry of TLS attacks, but also a logo design contest. So for those of you that don't follow the news so closely, the left is the triple handshake attack and the right is um, the uh, heartbeat attack. And partly due to this um, uh, wide range of attacks, TLS is not really a single protocol. It's constantly adapted. There are many versions um, and extensions that are obligatory and often necessary for security. And that makes it particularly challenging. So given that we, we kind of, uh, as cryptographers, we often say TLS is broken, um, we have also, I think, uh, an obligation to, to improve things. So I, I think alone, uh, so one, one way of doing that is to scare developers by coming up with attacks for, to motivate them to change things that we know are bad. And I think alone at uh, Usenix, there are three papers um, on TLS attacks. So another thing that we can do is maybe a bit more theoretical, is to analyze uh, protocols and um, aspects of, of um, TLS. And this um, gives me the, the opportunity to talk about the giants, um, large and small, on whose shoulders we stand. So some of this work looks at, uh, the, uh, at uh, doing a modular analysis of TLS, especially the, the first two. Then some look at um, analyzing um, RSA using a, a key encapsulation mechanism abstraction. And recently, um, due, due largely to the work of Jaga et al., there has been a renaissance in uh, the analysis of TLS. Um, and they introduced this ACCE notion um, to to talk about the security of the whole of TLS, but the analysis is uh, monolithic because they don't really have a handshake definition. Um, the closest related work is probably the work by Kravchis et al., and they are the first to analyze um, the security of TLS RSA using what they, um, a security notion for CAMS that they call constrained CCA security. So, but, um, but and that's a big but, uh, all of this work don't really look at um, at real um, TLS. So it's not the, the protocol that is standardized um, in uh, the IFC or used in, in practice. So there are two aspects that are um, lacking. One is that they don't analyze multi-handshake, uh, multi-cipher suit security. So they always look at the single handshake and the single cipher suit uh, in isolation. There are some attempts in that direction, but this is um, largely isolated. For instance, one that just looks at renegotiation and another one that looks at multi cipher suits, but only for SSH and for TLS, they only have negative results. And uh, moreover, the work is um, often uh, monolithic and uh, works at, uh, looks at tweaked protocols. So there are often changes in the protocols. So it's even not clear um, whether a comprehensive and modular treatment of the TLS handshake is feasible um, uh, right now. So in, in this talk, we give a, a partial answer to this question. So um, what these papers often claim is that they analyze the cryptographic core of uh, TLS. But what is the cryptographic core is somewhat ill-defined. So here I will, um, uh, I will introduce it um, using an example. So this could, for instance, be the cryptographic core of TLS. So there's a, um, a, a nonce exchange between the client and the server. And then there is a, a key encapsulation step where the client, for instance, encrypts the master secret um, and sends it to the server, which derives the master secret. And then in the third step, uh, there is a finished message exchange and a key derivation for the record keys. <clears throat> but this uh, picture misses a lot of details. So all the things in red are missing. So one is the renegotiation, so that the finished message of the previous handshake should be included in the finished message, then renegotiation, so there is a session ID in the second protocol, which uh, allows you to restart uh, the handshake using an older master secret. And more importantly, there is a negotiation of which protocol version, which algorithms to use that is part of the handshake. And the, the algorithms that will then affect all the cryptographic operations, um, for instance, the key derivation function will use a particular hash function, and 
in, in a multi-cipher suit, multi-handshake setting, the servers and the, the, the client and the servers may be tricked by the adversary to use different algorithms with the same cryptographic material. And that's, this has an impact on the cryptographic assumptions that you need to verify TLS. Um, and these details matter as demonstrated by an attack that we found. Um, um, that's the triple handshake attack. And it don't, look, don't try to decipher it, but the, the main point is here that it involves an initial handshake, um, a resumption, and the renegotiation. And you have to model all of three of those things in order to capture the attack in your model. And this work um, is already influencing standardization. So there's now an internet draft, an official internet draft, and hopefully this will become a mandatory extension. So um, as we've seen, we are not um, yet able to analyze, uh, well, the prior work didn't analyze all these details, so we are back to square one with respect to how to improve the situation. And uh, so our approach for doing that is to say that we cannot do it alone. So as cryptographers, we cannot, just cannot deal with this uh, 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 depth of, of real world um, artifacts that uh, creep into protocols over time. So we have to work with engineers. So instead of starting with um, simple cryptographic assumptions and simple protocols that we know, love, and understand, uh, our approach is to start from the actual real-world artifact. So we, start, we take a real-world uh, protocol that implements the standard and that interoperates with other, um, imp um, with other implementations, and then try to um, analyze it and look at what, uh, which assumptions do, does this, um, this protocol actually rely, rely on. So it's a form of reverse engineering of what are the actual assumptions behind uh, TLS. So that's the, the goal of the MeTLS uh, project. So it's a, uh, it's, a, it's a project that already is going on for several years. And the main goal is to have a standard compliant verified reference implementation. This is implemented in a high level uh, language. So we have a smaller code base to make our job easier. Looking at OpenSSL um, would, be, would be much harder. And it's verified down to computational cryptographic assumptions, and that's really the, the important part. So we're doing cryptography just at the larger scale. And we use state, to, to deal with the complexity, we use state-of-the-art uh, program verification tools like dependent type checkers or SMT solvers. Um, and as I mentioned, this is not our first paper on this. So the, the first kind of presentation of this framework was at Oakland last year, but it really focused primarily on the uh, record protocol. And the handshake security there was based on ad hoc interactive joint security assumptions on whole program um, modules. So in this paper, and also a lot of the information is now online, so we uploaded the, the source code and there's, a, there's an easy crypt proof and so on. Our goal is to approach the cryptographic community. And so one big contribution, in my opinion, it's not, not uh, in itself maybe very novel, but it is to m explain the results of, uh, of the Oakland paper, which is formalized in a programming language way to cryptographers. So one thing we do is we formalize a multi-handshake, multi-cipher suit, um, key exchange uh, security um, in an abstract model that hopefully is faithful to, to, the, um, to the, um, the reference implementation, and we give a master theorem that we prove both on paper and using tools. So the goal is to have a standard compliant implementation, and this implementation is annotated with ver uh, and verified with refinement type specifications using F7. Um, so that's uh, one big part of our work. The other one is to reduce um, the assumptions that we use on the key encapsulation mechanisms down to, um, uh, to lower uh, cryptographic assumptions. So as I mentioned, to get rid of this ad hocness of the assumptions. And to show that this is really necessary, we also compute statistics about the real world um, use of keys and agility parameters um, in, uh, on the web. So as this is, is, is way, way too much for the eight minutes that I have left, I will focus on something very specific, namely on the second part on how to reduce the assumptions on the key encapsulation mechanism. And this enables us to give a more modular analysis of the core of the handshake. And as I mentioned, the, the formal part of that is also checked using EasyCrypt. Um, a very important aspect here is agility. So agility, I think I, I introduced it informally, but it means that you use the same key with different algorithms. So a good example for that would, for instance, if you use um, uh, H, HPF 
with different hash algorithms. So we'll use the same key, but you will use it both with MD5 and with, uh, with SHA-1 or SHA-3. SHA and whether you still have security, um, it's, you cannot reduce it to, to an assumption on a single hash function. Or at least we don't know how. So here is a, a model or picture of uh, uh, key derivation. So we, we follow the, the approach of um, Morrissey et al. that separate uh, key derivation in TLS into three phases. So we model the, the pre-master secret keys change using a key encapsulation mechanism. And then we build um, a master secret derivation uh, from this uh, uh, master secret cam from this pre-master secret cam. And finally, from the master secrets, we derive both record keys and finished messages. <clears throat> so we model the first two uh, scams and the key derivation using a, a PRF, a, a normal uh, KDF function. And um, all of these algorithms are agile. So the pre-master secret cam um, will depend um, both on the cipher suite. It will be either RSA or Diffie-Hellman and on the protocol version. And the master secret cam is generic, but it depends on the protocol version and on a hash algorithm used for, key, um, for, used for the master secret extraction. So uh, there are two, um, I think, two reasons why this modular approach by Morris et al. was um, kind of lost, um, um, lost in credit over time. So one of them is that they, they, they couldn't figure out how to deal with um, encrypted uh, finished messages. So our solution to that is to um, release the derived record keys early in our security model and to also reveal unencrypted finished messages. As both these things are revealed to, to the environment or to the attacker, the, the environment can take care of encrypting finished messages itself and it's somehow outside of the handshake model. It becomes a problem of the TLS protocol, which it, which it should be, I think, as if you understand the intent of the standard. And this has um, advantages and disadvantages. So the advantage is that it composes well with the rest of TLS, with presumption and negotiation, which should be um, encrypted according to the standard. The disadvantage is that it's not compatible with existing key exchange models like Bilara and Wagaway. So the second, so the second reason um, why the, this model approach um, seemed infeasible is because it didn't really work with um, RSA, um, uh, with the RSA cipher suits. And the big reason for that is that uh, RSA PKCS1 is not CCA secure. So, um, so I will describe uh, the, <clears throat> the, the master secret cam. So it's, um, it consists, it's built from a pre-master secret cam in lowercase and the key extraction function, which is parameterized by a hash function. And uh, the, um, the key encapsulation is, is natural. So you, you encapsulate the pre-master secret, then you extract the master secret from the pre-master secret and the, the client and server nonces. So decryption is more complicated because of the Bleichenbacher countermeasure. So you, um, you decapsulate the, the PMS, but then if this decryption failed, you have to use a random PMS. And uh, there is an additional complexity because the protocol version to prevent um, version rollback is also is, is kind of replaces two bytes of the PMS in this kind of hack in the standard. So then here, is the, here are the details for the um, pre-master secret cam. It's roughly what you would expect. So for RSA, you encrypt the PMS and you send you, you, you um, and that becomes the ciphertext. And um, except for, again, this protocol version that it needs to be there for, for version rollback. And for, uh, for Diffie-Hellman, the PMS cam is just normal Diffie-Hellman with one of the Diffie-Hellman values being the public key of the cam and the other Diffie-Hellman value being the secret key. So here is the, the security um, definition that we want to prove about the cam. It's a replayable chosen ciphertext attack security. It's an, into, a notion introduced by Canetti et al. And um, so it's, it's slightly uh, weaker than CCA security. Um, but the main aspect I want to focus uh, on here is, um, is agility. So uh, the, security is the, the security definition is parameterized by an agility parameter P star, which um, is used to generate the challenge ciphertext, and by a set of agility parameters P, which uh, corresponds to the, um, 
to the agility parameters that the adversary can use in the encryption queries. And the reason for that is that as the adversary kind of controls the network in a key initiation model, he can make the server decrypt with respect to many different um, hash functions. So here is um, the security, um, the assumptions under which we want to prove the master secret cam secure. So we require these assumptions on the pre-master secret cam. Um, this one runness under PCA um, uh, oracles is the same as in Kraftschicht et al. Um, and to somehow as the price that we pay for this modularity um, is another um, assumption, namely non-randomizability, which intuitively says that given a ciphertext, you cannot come up with a, another ciphertext that decrypts to the same um, key. And then our security theorem is just there exists a reduction from, um, from RCCA security to uh, non randomizability and vulnerableness under PCA um, attacks. And this is again proven in EasyCrypt. So, how plausible are these assumptions? For Diffie Hellman, it's really just the standard assumptions that were always used um, in TLS. Um, it's a form of uh, Gap Diffie Hellman. And for RSA, it was, it's a, uh, for a one-way PCA, it's a slight variant of the Johnson and Kalinsky assumption, and we conjecture that for uh, non-randomizability, that non-randomizability is not much easier than that, based on uh, uh, an additional assumption that was used by Bart et al. So what are uh, open um, problems in this space of CAMs? So one is to prove or disprove our conjecture about non-randomizability. So I think some crypto analysis would be very nice here. Um, the other one is to reduce our reliance on random oracles in, in the proof. So maybe we can use uh, UCEs, or at least we can, um, we can hope to get rid of um, random oracles for hash functions that are just there for backward compatibility, like MD5. Um, and uh, also very important in practice is to consider joint security. So um, the use of RSA keys for both signing and encryption is really um, ubiquitous on the internet. So um, on the other hand, what I talked to you is just a small piece of the puzzle. So the, the CAM is just uh, this um, assumption number two in, in our main theorem about the handshake and explaining the definitions that the, uh, would allow you to, to understand what this theorem says would take a lot more than, than what I had. Um, and then zooming out even more, so the, the, the handshake, so the CAM, the CAM is a small piece of the handshake, the handshake is a small piece of uh, the TLS protocol, and the TLS protocol is just a small piece of the world of uh, web security. Um, what we are proposing, in a sense, is a new methodology to dealing with uh, real, world, um, real world protocols. It's somewhat inspired by code-based, code -based, uh, game-based reasoning, and um, uh, universal composability. Um, but it's meant to scale to much larger code bases using automated tools. So as, a, as the last slide, um, in case uh, the, the VAM session talk yesterday and my talk kind of, uh, uh, kind of instilled some angst into you that you will be made obsolete by, by intelligent machines, so I, or just in case you're curious, um, we are organizing a, a school on, on these tools um, in Paris in, in November. So let's thank the speaker.